I'm Mike Galley. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay connected for more engine power, just click the subscribe button below. It's worn out, rusty, and barely makes any horsepower at all. But it's one of the most fun engines we've ever worked on. <laughs> Plus, this Challenger cranks out 1,000 horsepower, and you can hear each and every one of them. Here's a contraption you probably have never seen before. Definitely not on engine power. Why on earth would we have it here? We're definitely not going to spray anything down. Now it does have a unique power plant attached and that is the treasure we are after. It's a Ford CSG 649 300 straight six, but not what you would find in an old truck. I've got a delivery. Yes! And it came from a long ways away. Colorado. Colorado. Okay, so allegedly this ran. Ran, yes. Well, you know, you know how you know how that's gone lately. So, we, we've uh, heard that a lot and had some uh, uh, had, had a, some problems. Had a few but. issues. But what I love about this, industrial application. And the nice thing about that is typically they have better parts in them because they because it's a stationary power unit, they have to run for long periods of time. They have upgraded parts as far as like the timing gears and the crankshaft and mm -hmm. things like that. And they run under partial load. This not on gasoline. Is, either. And this one's not on gasoline. This has some sort of crazy propane setup. How about this? Mechanical governor. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty unique piece. And what was the application? What was this doing? So the guy that we got it from said it was used as a sprayer. Let's get it running exactly the way it is. Okay. You know, and uh, on here. On here. I, I say we try to light it. Yeah. I'm, Let, I'm let's with hot wire it like it's a stolen car. Now you're talking. <laughs> a few flywheel bolts were loose. That could be a good or bad sign. She was on there cattywampus. We also need to move some wires around to get battery power to the starter. The spark plugs are coming out to get a little seafoam deep creep in the cylinders. They have been dry from sitting, so a little quality lube will help them out. Those plugs actually came out. Yeah, they came out. Not too hard, but yeah. that propane was burning dirty. Propane, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Natural gas. All right. I hope we can keep that. Oh yeah! Look at that customization right there. Okay, we're hooked up on the starter. Yeah. Everything good? Yeah. Let's see if it'll... Bad starter or bad solenoid? Uh, well, the starter is, solenoid seems to be working, so let the starter tried. Turns out the loose flywheel bolts were a bad sign. This is going to be awfully hard to start. It doesn't have a ring gear. There's no ring gear on it. All right, I got the top. We can let it come down some. Okay. All right, Pat, I found this flywheel. It's our small block Ford neutral same, balance. Uh, same bolt pattern. Same bolt pattern, but this thing is going to be way too small oh. in diameter. No way the starter will engage no. the ring gear. Oh my God, there's, there's two inches difference. Yeah. Look at this. We are not going to mess with that. You know what we're going to do? We're going to pull it. I'd, I would rather have gotten it running on this stand because I think that would be extremely cool. But we have the ultimate run stand, the dyno. <laughs> the dyno. All right. Draining the coolant was quite a surprise. We couldn't believe how clean it was. Radiator hoses can be stubborn to get off. They get stuck, and a lot of times you're pulling and hitting elbows when they come loose. Here's a new little tool from Matco that works really well. It basically has a little flat spoon end on it that allows you to get in between the radiator hose and the inlet of the radiator or the water pump. You just get it in, move it around a little bit, and it breaks the radiator hose free. This engine is within 150 pounds of a fully dressed aluminum headed big block Chevy. So we will put it in the heavyweight category. With the industrial bell housing removed, it's looking more like the 300 Ford we are all familiar with. This is what's important. It turns over great. Free. Not too bad. Superflow gets the credit for making these engines so easy to hook up on their dyno cut. 
No matter the engine, we dial indicate the dry flange to avoid any unwanted vibration from it being out of center. Up next, no matter what your parents told you as a child, ghouls do exist. In fact, we've got one in our shop. Plus, the inline six hits the dyno. Here's today's tech tip that will help you with suspension setup. An angle finder is a huge help when setting up your suspension. Things like pinion, control arm, and shock angles have to be right or your suspension won't be able to go through its full motion of travel. This intercom angle finder measures zero to 90 degrees in 500 degree increments. The intercom angle finder has magnets on the base and the sides so you can set it in any position and it's compact enough to fit in tight spaces. Here's a car that was originally an April Fool's joke involving the engineers at Dodge. Then it became a reality thanks to the group of car builders at Speedcore Performance Group. It's called the SRT Ghoul. It's a Challenger-based domestic supercar that has the most powerful crate engine ever produced right under this hood. 1,000 horsepower of Hellefit powers this beast. Let's take a closer look. It's a 426 cubic inch aluminum blocked modern day Hemi that produces 1,000 horsepower and 950 pound feet of torque. A three liter supercharger compresses 15 PSI of boost to reach the power rating. For weight reduction, there are several pieces of carbon fiber, like this hood Speedcore manufactured for this build. The reason we have it in the shop is to show you a brand new configurable exhaust system from Magnaflow called the XMOD. It's not just another exhaust kit. This is an experience that lets you choose and decide what sound you want when you want it. Now that is sexy. There, there's tip options in here. Mm -hmm. They send uh, an adapter to run the factory tips if you like that original look. Right, right. Or these coming out of that square area. But with the carbon fiber accents on the car already, that's it. This kind of matches the car. Wild. That is unbelievably nice. People ask Magnaflow to build a premium modular system with all the bells and whistles. XMOD is their answer. It's a modular design that lets you switch between the straight pipes and mufflers with no cutting. Everything you need to go from stealth mode to full bore race car or anything in between comes with the kit. Well, Pat, I have to say the difference between the stock setup and this is night and day from aesthetics all the way to the pipe size. Yeah, the quality looks a lot nicer, uh, the pipes are bigger, and there's some options of what you can have it sound like. Okay, so after we install the X pipe, what are we gonna do? Have that weakened warrior as loud as we can be or tone it down for that nice drive to work? Well, uh, I don't think this should be toned down whatsoever, so it's not much of a decision on my end. I think we should put the straight pipes on it, and it's a thousand horse engine. I wanna hear a thousand horse engine through straight pipes. We'll have our fun with it, and then we'll put the quieter ones on. It'll be a little bit more uh, manageable for people who don't appreciate the stuff that I do. Hey, that's fair enough. So let's talk a little bit more about this <clears throat> pipe here. This is really the specialty of the kit. It, it is, you know, and you know, the, the thing, w w no matter what you have up here, that drone that you'll have at partial throttle cruise, they did very, a very, very good job to eliminate that. This right here, see how it's got a closed end? This is a resonance chamber. It's a resonator that recreates that drone frequency. What that is, it's passive. It will come out and it will actually collide with the one that's being generated by generating one of its own, and it collides and it cancels out the drone noise. So very, very innovative, and uh, it really helps with something that makes a lot of power that you will normally just be drive you nuts driving it. Yeah. Yep. It doesn't, it's not going to have that. Um, and one more thing, I guess, before we get started putting this stuff on, um, cars with MDS mm -hmm. that drop cylinders at cruise, um, that's where a lot of that drone is introduced, and this cancels it all out, which is really cool. Magnaflow has gone the extra mile to manufacture their own high-quality stainless steel active exhaust valves giving you even more sound control options. Now it looks like it tucks up in there. The resonator is the heart of the NDT, or No Drone Technology, system. It uses quarter wave technology to cut the irritating frequencies in the 120 hertz range by 30 to 40%. However, the exhaust sound remains rich, full, and powerful, but with no drone, 
no restriction, and no loss of power. is definitely one rowdy vehicle. That's pretty mean. 847 horse, 868 pound-feet of torque on the first Ripola. That is awesome. Dude, that sound. I, I actually almost had to close my ears. And uh, you know, I got, I got that pro stock top fuel hearing, right? Yeah. And I almost had to put my fingers in my ears on it. It sounds like a Trans Am car wide open down <laughs> the long straightaway. That, that's, that's unbelievably awesome. Now, and that's it. The, the sound of the exhaust is what makes a vehicle, right? Because you can have the baddest ass vehicle ever, and if it's got some wimpy exhaust on it, it's not gonna do it any justice. This makes it sound like a car, like a muscle car. Could you imagine though with this exhaust on the car? going and doing some pulls on the interstate or something like oh, that, yeah. just the sound people would hear. Yeah, no, it'd be spectacular. Illegal probably, but spectacular. Yeah. We want to be good citizens, so we're replacing the straight pipes with the included Magnaflow mufflers. The straight through design controls the exhaust note for daily driving, but keeps the iconic Magnaflow sound. We're installing them on the lift, but you can do this anywhere using V-band clamps and an 11 millimeter wrench. This car has a little bit of power. <laughs> but listen to it. No, I know. There's no way in the pit of Hades I would ever think a thousand horses would sound like this. Technology nowadays is so incredible that not only one, you have something that's extremely manageable and something that is extremely refined, but just has raw power. Yeah. What the Ford 300 lacks in power, it makes up with endurance. <laughs> wow. We're continuing on with this 300 six-cylinder project, and it's ready to head to the dyno room. But first, the monstrosity is taking up too much room, so it's headed out. There's a f truck in my way. What's your guess? Will it run? Will it smoke? Will it knock like an unwanted ghost? We're all about to find out. Standard procedure is water hookup, and in our case, some improvised exhaust routing. There are a couple of features about this engine that are unique because it is an industrial application. One, the carburetor is set up to run propane. We're gonna run it on gasoline for obvious reasons, so we're gonna switch that out. Also, this engine actually has a mechanical governor on it. Because it was on a pump and it was probably a steady state engine, it probably did not rev over three or 3,500. We are not gonna wanna utilize that. So, instead of taking all of this off and splitting the pump apart and all that good stuff, for dynoing, we're gonna take the linkage off here and remove the carburetor and replace it with a gas unit. It's a simple one barrel design from a stock late 70s Ford pickup. Necessity is the mother of invention. This throttle bracket is not pretty, but it's perfectly functional. All you horsepower junkies know the key to making big power is to have a cool, dense air charge being introduced to the engine. And keeping the intake manifold cool is a big part of that whole recipe. So here's a little design that has always gotten a little bit under our skins, and it was really the only way Ford could do it. The exhaust manifold is mounted directly under the intake manifold. Now we all know that heat rises, so the only place it can go is up and saturate the intake manifold. One thing you'll see a lot on performance builds on these 300s is the header and the intake manifold will both be wrapped with header wrap, and that creates a thermal barrier between the two, keeping the intake manifold a little cooler. Ooh, breaker points. All right, the condenser is still in it. The points are, well, they look a little corroded. I wonder if they can, uh... oh, yep, they're moving. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yep. Yeah, that cam still works. I'm going to blow this thing out. Clear prop. Well, no, nothing flew out of it. No rattly noises. So that means there's no debris in it. Yeah. Funky. This engine did not have an ignition coil, so we grabbed an old school one on the shelf. This system requires a ballast resistor to knock the voltage down to the points of condenser. Whoa! It's working! Oh my god! And it has 56 pounds of oil pressure. That is the worst set of points I've ever seen work. It runs. It's running. This engine has not run in probably 15, 20 years by looks of all the stuff that was in it. Looking down the hole into the cylinder, it looked like a frog pond in there. <laughs> it's horrible. This thing is chugging away with 55 pounds of oil pressure. An engine that sits this long, the seals go bad, they sit, they'll leak oil. Uh, as soon as you get them fired back up, they'll spurt fluids from all uh, different parts of the engine. This one hasn't done any of that. This is way more fun at this moment than running a thousand horse big block. I know that sounds crazy, but it is. This is one of the highlights of my career <laughs> at engine power. I, 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 I'm not kidding. There's a reason why LS swaps are so popular. It's a great engine, and you can put one in just about any vehicle you can think of. Powertrain Products has introduced their new Stage 3 525 horsepower LS crate engine. It's designed for any LS swap application. Features include new GM Performance LS3 cylinder heads, a custom ground camshaft, Viton valve seals, and high tension valve springs. The engine is designed for fuel injected applications and tuning is required for proper drivability. You can make your choice from three options. Stage one makes 400 horsepower. Stage two, 450 horsepower. And this one, the stage three, puts out 525 horses. No matter what one you choose, they're all backed by a two year warranty. Visit shopengines.com to find out more. Up next, this may be the quietest dyno session we've ever had. It's not running. <laughs> it's not running, but it's sitting there running. It's like an electric motor. All right, there's a bunch of firsts on this one. And I'm very excited about it. One, this engine's idling at 450 RPM. Two, the fans are way louder than the engine, and I can't tell if it's running or not unless I'm looking at the pulleys. And three, I don't know if we've ever pulled one this low because this is not going to take any RPM. So I think Pat's more excited about this little six banger than any big block pro stock engine he ever built. I'm going to make a pull from 1,200. <laughs> now you're talking <laughs> to 3,000. Well, that's what these things were made for. Torque yeah. super down low. And yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it is what it is. Here we go. Everything looks good. Nothing's spurting out anywhere. Let's load her up. <laughs> oh my gosh, that dyno brake doesn't know what's going on. That's a pull. It made a pull. 224 pound-feet of torque at the, at the hit, yep. and 82 romp and stomp and horsepower at 2,900. Now this thing was rated at 120. Yeah, the gas ones were like 120. And we have accessories on it. We have the alternator, the water pump, the idler, and that. It uh, has, a, has a, a governor. A governor. The governor's pump. not hooked up, but it's turning it. Yes. And it has a mechanism in there that's going to suck power yep. out of it. So let's make another little hit. I'll, I'm going to roll into it a little bit different and see what it does here. Wow. <laughs> Oh, 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 sounds like it's clearing up a little. There you go. Oh, <laughs> oh 86 horse. Yes. Oh, oh my goodness. 228 pound feet of torque. <laughs> that says a lot though, man. That torque is. Yeah, no, that's that's huge, the story right? Story of the engine. This thing uh, has enough torque to run a generator. Like these will run like not only on sprayers and agricultural pumps, but these were on generators as well. Like this would be like in the generator of like a grocery store or something like that. 
I'm gonna take it to 3600 because oh, that, that that's what it's rated. Now we're talking. For. Now it, it doesn't have any valve spring pressure, so it might do a little some little choppy up some little funky. But let's uh just just for scientific purposes. Well, that's the range that the engine was yeah. set up for. The engine was rated at 3600, mm -hmm. so I don't feel bad about taking it that high. Yep. We'll see if she's got anything left here. Eleven hundred RPM. <laughs> Good oil pressure. Nice smooth pull so far. There it goes. Hear it? Yep. Little little. Came uh, in at about 3150, 3200. Little little choppy choppy. 217 pound feet, 88 horse. So. <laughs> That's all she's got. That's all she's got, Captain. Wrap her up. Uh, no no, I'm gonna shut the fans off. But watch. Listen for the engine. You, you, it's not running. <laughs> it's not running, but it's sitting there running. It's like an electric motor. All I can hear is the water pumps for the dyno. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's, that's spectacular. Now I want to start working on it. I feel bad, and this is kind of goofy, I feel bad about cracking this one apart because it has lived its whole life, it runs perfect, and there's nothing wrong with it. It needs to be put in a glass case and, and just says uh, it break, break open and it went in need of a generator or something like that. But we are going to do it right. You know, yes. we are going to do it right. It's got a bunch of good parts. We're going to put a bunch of nice parts on it. Um, this will be the probably the most extreme before and after that we've done in a while. It will. All right. Done deal. Done deal. Look at that. For more information on today's show, check out our website, powernationtv.com.